So welcome back, lesson six in the Fusion 360 for Woodworkers series. Today we're going to put it back onto our bookcase and we're going to put an ornate trim on top using the sweep command. If that sounds good, stick around. So here we are, our bookcase is really coming on well. Something happened when I loaded up Fusion today and it's worthwhile having a look at that. If you come up here in the top of our screen, we've got this little clock with a red dot on it that's called job status. And look at this, view job status working offline in maintenance mode. We're currently updating our services. Now Fusion 360 will come back online as soon as, you, as, soon as we're done. You can continue to work on your design that's are available offline. Now, we've got the bookcase open here and you can see I can't save it because it's already saved. Now, as I loaded the model up today to get back into the video, it took quite a long time for Fusion to actually sync this and bring it up. Obviously, they're updating their servers. But this offline mode is really useful. Now, my internet connection, when it works, is super lightning fast, but every now and then, because I work over Wi-Fi, I've got a family that uses Xbox and games and things, um, my internet can slow down. And I find that clicking on this and manually selecting working offline just improves the performance, stops it freezing, stops it crashing, stops it syncing. And once I've got the model where it needs to be, I can spring it back online, that will sync back to the cloud. But that does allow me to use this offline. So I thought that was worth having a look at while that status has come up for us. Okay, let's crack on. What I want to do today is to drop a back on this. Now the back's not complicated on this design, it's just gonna be a large sheet or a couple of large sheets of birch wood ply. So I'm just gonna model a single back on this and we'll make it birch wood ply. So we'll spin the model round, we'll come into the back, we'll come into the sketch mode and we'll just sketch down here towards the um, origin, like so. We'll then come in with a rectangle, click on the origin, and we'll give it some dimensions. We know we want it to be the bookcase height, and we know we want it to be the bookcase length. Dunk. And now you can see we've got a back on here. Now I want to extrude this, so let's just go into the extrude command. Now can you see this? When I bring my mouse over here, the back comes blue, but at the bottom here, there's this very, very thin strip that's not going blue. Now that's because we've got this intersection piece on the back. Don't know why it doesn't do it on all the other planes, but there always seems to be one plane that does that. So just make sure you collect all of that. Now we can get hold of the arrow. Now we want to extrude it away from us so you can see it comes into a minus figure. And we want this to be just stand apply. So we'll just make it minus 12. Don't forget to make this a new component. Bingo. So we've now got a new component, that's the back, and we'll cleverly call that component back. Now, I don't want the back just to be sort of nailed on like this. I want it to be recessed into a little bit of a dado all the way around. So let's have a look at how we're going to do that. I'm going to use the offset command to bring in all the edges of my back panel. Now, to do that, we can come ahead and we can turn everything off as we've done in previous episodes. If I right click on back and come down my menu, I've got this isolate function. If I click isolate, it turns everything off apart from the panel we want to work on, which is groovy. If I right click again, isolate now turns to unisolate. I'm not even sure that's a word, but I know what they mean. Click on that, it turns everything back on again. So that's super fast to isolate the component we want to work on. So let's come into these edges into modify our old friend the offset faces and we want to offset that face we want to offset that face we want to offset that face and we want to offset that face and we want to offset these faces by a minus amount because we want the panel to be smaller and we want to offset it by the joinery now we know that the joinery is a third of the overall stock dimension. I'm just gonna put times two in that. So I actually offset this by two times the joinery, i.e. two thirds of the stock dimension. And when I turn back on all my parts using an isolate, you can see what I've achieved by doing that. Zoom in, 
you can see now my panel is sticking up a third into that joinery and if we were to come back and we were to say I'm going to change my stop thickness and my stop thickness is going to be 30 millimeters it will still stick in a third of that 30 millimeters bring that back down to 18 millimeters so that works pretty well now the next thing is I want to cut some rabbits in this so this will actually fit inside there so we can use the modify command for that we've seen this before nothing exciting select we will select this top face my tool body will be the back I want to cut out but I want to keep my back once I've finished bang and that's now give me what I need right click for the fast menu repeat combine this time we'll do the side then we'll do the back okay we'll do the left edge we'll do the back okay now that's pretty good and that's got the rebate that we need but you can still see the joinery inside still cutting through so let's just have a look at that let's spin round repeat and buy now we're going to select the tool as the back and the target body i just want to be these panels now that should in theory select all these panels because remember they were copies let's see okay spin around to the back yeah you can see that's worked pretty well so that's now done all of those adjustments at the same time now we just need to do this middle shelf and this bottom shelf repeat the combine select the tool which is going to be the back select the body which is going to be that middle shelf okay now remember those shelves weren't copies we just created a big board and cut it up so we need to select each of these individually repeat command and there you go so now we come in and we hide the back panel not only does it give us this nice rebate all the way around or this nice rabbit all the way around it's also redimensioned all of these for us as well so that works really well so now we've got a back in our bookcase now let's give it some properties right click let's give it some um, physical material we know it's going to be wood and I know I want it to be a plywood and we'll change the look and feel of this when we come to the rendering but that's okay for now it's just a plain plywood Going to the properties again, this is now part number 008, it's the back, the bounding box is going to be length of 2328 by a height of 1228 by a thickness of 12. Okay, we're looking good. So now I want to just put a moulding on top of this bootcase, a crown if you will. So we'll just shape it out roughly first and then there's a few tools I want to introduce you to. So we'll go and sketch on this top plane here. And we'll just put ourselves a rectangle in from the origin to the end. And we'll make this the stock thickness. And we'll make this one the bookcase length. Okay, and now we'll extrude this up and we'll try and make it sort of proportional to everything else. So let's use the bookcase height, but divide that by 10 and make that a new component. And that way it will always be a tenth of the overall height of the bookcase, which looks pretty nice, I think. Okay, now let's give this a name. Um, we'll call this the top molding so i want to make that a bit better than just a big gray slab so we're going to sketch on it so come in with a sketch select the front face of that component i'm just going to come in with a new tool fit point spline creates a spline through the selected fit points select the first points to start the spline select the additional points as fit points so let's click on that and let's come down here now do you see where my cursor snaps to the end if I come down, it snaps to a triangle. Do you see that? Now that triangle shows me at the center of that face from this point to this point, the center of that face. So I'm going to select that. Then I'm going to pick up this top line and I'm going to slide along that till I get to the triangle there, which shows 
I mean the center points of that face, just click there, and then I'm going to come back down here to the center point of that face and double click, and that finishes off my, oops, and that finishes off my line. Now you can see that's now given me quite a nice arc. But if I click on here, you can see it gives me these two green levers here, and similarly on this one, these two green levers here, and similarly on this one these two green levers here. Now I can use those to change the shape of that art we've just made. Click on the right one, hold the left button and lift it up like so. And I'm going to just move it to oh, something like that. And then I'm going to come over here and click on this one. I'm going to do the same. I'm just looking for a pleasing shape and that's looking quite good to me like so and that now gives me quite a nice pleasing shape but I've no guarantee that I've got this right just messing about so I want to make sure that those two sides are equal and we have a command for that we have a constraint for that called the equal constraint click on the equal constraint click on that lever that now goes blue and come over and click on that lever and there you go, so I've now got a nice curve. I'm going to extrude it, press E for extrude, select that piece and select that piece. Extent is going to be to an object and no surprise at all, we're going to come to the back of this and we're going to cut, dunk. There you go. I now have a rather nice pleasing profile on the top. But I don't want to stop there, I also want to put a bit of a moulding on. Now this bookcase is actually going to go between two walls, so I don't want the moulding on this edge or this edge, but I would like a bit of an ornate moulding across this top. So there's a command that allows us to do that called the sweep command, and like most things we start off by making a sketch. So, sketch, come into the end panel here, let's just zoom in so we can see what we're doing. I just want to do some sort of fancy-ish shape on here. So first thing I'll do, I'll put a square, I think. And we'll just make that, what does joinery look like? Joinery and joinery. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's not too bad, is it? I don't think. So yeah, we'll have that. And then we'll put a circle in. Now this is a great thing about sketches. You can build up quite complicated shapes by just sketching. Um, and I think what I'll do, I'll tie that to joinery as well. Uh, a bit small. So we'll make that joinery multiplied by two. Oh, that's too big. I'm just messing around here. So joinery times 1.5. Oh yeah, I like that. And if I just hover over that piece, there, you can see I've now got a profile in that piece of wood. So I'm going to try and extrude that now, but I'm not going to use the extrude command. I'm going to finish the sketch, and I'm going to come up to here to create, and in create we've got a new friend called Sweep. Now Sweep's a sketch profile or planar face along a selected path sweeps a sketch profile. Well, we have a sketch profile because we just made one here. So let's use that then. Let's go to sweep. It's a single path because I just want it to go around this curve. Profile is going to be that piece and the path is going to be that front edge. Dunk. And there you go. And I've now got quite a nice path and profile along there but I think it could be better. So let's come back into our sketch. Let's come down to the timeline and edit that sketch that we made before. What I can do with those corners. Can I do something nice with those? And come in with a circle again. And let's put a circle down from there to there. And from there to there, so that's constrained by that circle, so as that resizes, as joiner resizes, that will resize as well. And I'm liking this sweep now that comes down here. So I'm now gonna finish that sketch, 
And I'm now going to come back into my sweep command and edit that feature. And now I'm going to come back in here and say, actually, I also want you to sweep that piece and that piece. Okay. Now look at that. So that's nice. That's like gives me a rope in the center of that top piece. And I like that. I like that quite a lot. So I'm going to come in now. I'm going to give this some uh, physical material. No surprise, we're going to make that a pine, which is nice. Let's give it some um, properties. We know it's piece uh, 009, and we know the description is going to be length of cracky 2612. It's going to be a height of. Yeah, it's going to be a height of. 1, 2, 8, and it's going to be a thickness of 18. Done. So there we go. So we've now got our bookcase pretty much where we want it to be. Now, so far, we've been telling the computer what the material it is, and it just simulates a texture on this. Now, that's not the text that's going to be used for rendering. Now, I'm going to this grey back panel. It's just annoying me. So I'm going to come back to the back panel. And I'm going to come down again, and I've got this second command here called Appearance. Now, when you bring Appearance up, it looks pretty similar. But this is actually a texture that it uses for rendering. And let's come down here and look at wood. And inside this wood, we've got some things going on. So let's say that you're going to be pine in the background to give you a pine finish. Now, the way Fusion works, it uses the physical material to give us the characteristics, the mass, the weight, the density the strength, etc. And it uses appearance for the rendering. So Fusion now knows that this back panel is plywood, but it also knows it's got some sort of pine facing on there. And I could easily say, actually, I don't want pine facing on that. What I want as my appearance is, oh, I want a super glossy solid wood facing, and I'm going to make that Oh, maple, curly, glossy maple. So I'm downloading that. Once it's downloaded, I can drag that onto the back. Bang. And it's now give me a curly, glossy maple back. So you can really start to tune this. And the great thing about appearance is we can change it. We can change the grain texture, the size of the grain, the direction of the grain. And we'll look at that further on but for now i just want to make that a basic pine background to bring the cupboard together so that's it for today we've learned how to make rebates very very quickly for the back panel how to add the back panel and we've looked at this top molding and use a sweep command to make the top molding the next episode i want to actually look at draw construction and we're going to use both through dovetails and blind dovetails in those drawers as well as using a secondary material for the inside of the drawers and a nice pine front on those drawers. I'll see you next time.